Welcome back to the Dynamic Nutramedical Report. We have some of the top guests on the planet. One of my favorite guests is Dr. Mike Hoffman, who wears many hats. He's an environmentalist and activist and also has become quite an economic expert with his co-authors. And uh, Dr. Mike, you've written a number of articles recently. Uh, what we see is a death spiral in the economy, and we see Obama cheering it on like the Pied Piper of Hamlin saying, jump into the open maw of the volcano of hitting the debt ceiling and defaulting. The Japanese, the Chinese are freaking. We already have the, the if you want to call it derivatives market, shaking. We see the stock market dropping. And I think already there's a kind of a behind-the-scenes kind of almost expectant terror uh, in investors in treasury notes and municipal bonds that's about to see. It's almost like somebody had, you can hear the ch of the match. And the you know like the old western with the, the with the the fuse that's heading toward the big barrel full of dynamite. Yeah, uh, it, that sound is happening, and you hear the clip clip of the horses trying to run away before it blows. <laughs> I, I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain. I put bets on it that Obama and the elements within the Republican Party, we call the 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 Tea Party fascists, that that don't care how this solves. Rather than coming up with solutions. They waited so long to not take action. Now they're in a crisis, and this bond market blow is going to cause a lot of damage. Oh, yes, no question about it. In fact, I don't remember which one. I have seven articles on the financial death spiral, global financial death spiral. And, folks, I started out writing one article, and it turned into seven. I mean, it's so bad out there that it just is almost beyond belief. I mean, it, you could not set out on a project to destroy the global economy as efficiently and as effectively as they have done. And it cannot be done just because of ideology. It's got to be done in, uh, basically on purpose and what we're seeing Obama do now it's just it's just beyond belief as you're sitting there with your mouth open watching this man this maniac uh, systematically uh, terrorizing this country uh, by blaming Republicans by blaming everybody else of course but himself which is a really key indicator yeah, of a well, sociopath well, he's a sociopathic narcissist who's also a uh, sock puppet for Satan uh, yeah. and, and I'm reading an article here in Trans Research because I subscribe to it, and it's a fantastic. Gerald Salenti's Trans Research, and one of the articles here on page uh, eight of the the most current one, which is September 2013, is by. Paul Craig Roberts, who's, by the way, a contributing editor and former assistant secretary of the United States Treasury, he writes at the top of it, lies, damn lies, and government lies. Despite what we're told, an economic crisis still looms. And then the title of the next article, which is a conversation with uh, Gerald Salente, just tells you just how bad this is going to get. I don't think people understand we're facing something that is orders of magnitude worse than the 1929 crash. It's yes. even worse than the Lombardi crash that caused the black death of the 14th century. I don't think people understand this. We're going to talk about if this crashes, this will cause the death of millions per month. Oh, I totally agree, and I cite many, many very, very prominent economists throughout the world in my articles basically saying the same thing. Uh, right. They may not say orders of magnitude worse, but they say it's going to be as bad as. Well, folks, I do think it's going to be orders of magnitude worse. Yeah, it's even a different beast. You see, those were local ones, like the European. This yeah. is a global catastrophe. I mean, the Chinese are justifiably freaked. The Japanese with Abenomics, who are also got a crazy economic policy of just printing money are, are freaked. The Europeans are hanging by an economic thread, so their so-called union is over. Uh, the economies of, 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 of Germany, which is still has a little bit of what we call smothered economy, is fainting. Uh, what we have is policies that are hell-bent on foolishness like global warming at the same time we're heading into an ice age. We have policies where they want to continue to treat America like we're an ATM, as they say. They, Obama has a communist attitude of, we'll continue to rob Peter to pay Paul until we Peter out. Yes. And rather than getting controls of the costs, like I introduced 10 points of a health care system last week, so we mm -hmm. have things that will actually work, like putting all doctors, primary doctors on salary and all specialists, and have the primary doctors control the specialists and all the mid-levels and everybody in the county, 
And so you don't have state control or federal, and you have national licensure. You get rid of malpractice. You have boards to control the cost of medical equipment, drugs, and make sure nutraceuticals, anything you can do for your health, is a total tax write-off. No, the government does everything I'd call bass backwards, if you yeah. know what I mean. Oh, absolutely. They do it bass backwards. And, and, and both parties are involved here. We have the evil party, the Democrats, and the stupid party, the Republicans. But the cheerleader that's worse than all is Obama. He's an abomination. The man he is really, out of his mind. He, he is truly out of his mind. And, I, you know, just for fun, I looked at about a dozen different definitions of a sociopath uh, on the Internet last night, and he fits a, the definition of a sociopath almost to a T. Out of 16 primary points to describe a sociopath, he meets 14. Oh. And the only reason I don't know about the last two is because it's about his sexual preferences and so forth. And, of course, those have been sec- kept secret. There's a lot of rumors out there. But nonetheless, what we're seeing here, it's almost to the point where he is no longer a sociopath but a psychopath and this is what really bothers me is that he basically is on a mission to destroy this country i don't see how else you can describe it at this particular point in time yeah he's basically he doing he, he should never show up in public to speak especially in front of his little suki teleprompters unless he has a hard hat on with an american flag yeah. with an american literally map of america broken in pieces by a wrecking ball that's what needs to be on his hard hat, because the man is here not to solve social problems to give universal health care or allow capitalism, which is allow small business to grow, or to allow the country to build its economy and bring business back to this country from third world countries or make proper deals with nations like China so they won't pollute us. No, no. His whole idea isn't even communism. It's to deconstruct America. It's yes, to make it a, post, a post-imperial power, to make it a post-colonial state of a global order where the, the corporations literally stretch the, the dead skins of all the nation states over their superstructure and right. control every individual with a biometric world currency, it, otherwise it, known as a mark. Yeah, it describes what's going to happen in Revelation to a T. I, you know, you look at this and you look at what's going on right now, and you think, how can anyone who has read the Bible and claims to be a Christian uh, understand this as any different than being the end times or the predecessor to the end times? Because what, what we're seeing is right out of Revelation. It is staggering to see this actually happening and happening so fast. And the interesting thing about you know, he's a black guy. He was elected because he was black and he was a messiah figure and he's, all the rest. He's a, he's, a, he's a messianic Madison Avenue manufactured Just liar like in chief. They should call him the liar in chief because, as it says in the Bible, I am against those who are maker of lies and your father, the Satan, the devil. <laughs> yeah. He really is, and it's just everything. In fact, I just read an article, and I have it in uh, my seventh article on that's listed, basically say, finding that about 60 to 66 percent of the American people, including blacks, thought we were making major progress on race relations before he was elected. Exactly. Now it's down in the 20 percent range. Well, look at his comments about Trayvon Martin. If he had a son, he yes. would be like Trayvon. Yeah, scoping out neighborhoods that are gated communities, looking in people's windows, figuring out what he's going to rob. And then when someone comes up and confronts him, he pounds his head against the ground until eventually the guy trying to save himself from being getting a, a, a brain injury or dying on the spot pulls yeah, out a right. gun and terminates him. And they call him guilty because he had his head, he was pinned down and being killed. And you think, and, and then Obama makes the racially inflammatory statement of, I had a son, he'd be like Trayvon Martin. Oh, I think actually, it, believe it or not, I think accidentally it was probably one of the first and only true statements this man has ever made. Well, you know, that's probably true. I never thought of it from that perspective, but you're probably right on. Uh, we're, we're, it's, it's, he is a very sick man. That's all I can describe. I've, ch- I've really tried to keep myself from saying that up until yeah, now. But what he is well, doing now to Americans is just criminal, just criminal. Inviting, you know, on the mall yesterday, inviting this, this uh, big celebration of aliens and so forth on the mall while stopping the the veterans from going into seeing the World War II memorial. Yeah, illegal aliens on the mall, but he wouldn't let the veterans go in, and he wouldn't let the even do Catholic ceremonies in the naval bases. Uh, I mean, this is disgusting. And then he declared November uh, what it called respect. 
Welcome back. And uh, those articles, are they available for me to post up, uh, Dr. Mike, so we can uh, people can read those articles in the death spiral, the ones you sent me? Yes. Good. Now, there's an article here on page 13 of the same journal, Gerald Salenti, September 2013, which I think is also fantastic. Capitalism is dead and so is the recovery. This is by Gerald Salenti himself. And it's a series of interviewed questions on Gerald. And he's this guy literally has been around. He's got a uh, what I call an Einsteinian level of international geopolitical, sociological, and trends IQ. Okay, so you're listening yep. to a social Einstein here, and what he says here is this is the end game. Now there is a chance of getting out of it with excellence, with repentance, with America re- re- going back to its roots. But what we're having right now is we have a leader that's balkanized in the country, starting race wars and class wars, making the country lose its ability to have capital for business, starting us austerity fascism using the excuse of this shutdown so we can literally shut down things like for example i found this out just an hour ago 2500 nuclear regulatory workers are furloughed so if there even if there was a plant in a nuclear plant or a fukushima die off extreme explosion hydrovolcanic explosion they don't even have the nrc on tap to actually be available to even report it this is really crazy stuff. We don't have the CDC workers, 68% are furloughed. We don't have the food safety workers working. This is nuts. And uh, Obama is the primary one responsible for this because he continued to shove through something that wasn't even his author. He handed over the building of the all of these things, including the... Uh, uh, the Dodd-Frank bill, the Obamacare bill, all the appropriations a year before Obamacare to even set up the death panels. This is all architecture by corporations to literally strip America like a Thanksgiving turkey to the bone. And Obama is like the Pied Piker of Hamlin, walking us up the side of a mountain into an open maw of a volcano. That's what he's doing to the population of America, and fools are still following this guy. You know, one of the things I want to do to emphasize that point is in Article 3 or 4, Part 3 or 4 of my series, I discuss what's happening with the quantitative easing. And one of the things that you have to understand that the only benefit of quantitative easing goes to the rich. It goes to the banks and it goes to Wall Street. It does not get down to our level at at Main Street. No no trickle down. This is $85 billion a month in debt created by borrowing money money at 46 cents on the dollar that are literally money we can't afford to give 85 billion dollars to the too big to fail banks are now bigger than at the 2008 recession right this is craziness and in the meantime the middle class is being wiped out because it doesn't create any jobs and it doesn't really help you and i in our take-home pay and so forth in fact we've lost four thousand dollars a year per family over right. the every the last four to five years it is this guy is destroying the middle class he's doing it deliberately and then putting on this big smile and basically saying you know i want to save the middle class i want to protect the middle class when in fact he is destroying it. I, I can't believe how he can actually put that blank smile on and look at you straight like I would. I'm doing the best for you, and he's doing the exact opposite. He's doing for example, the exact if wrote, opposite. If he wrote a check for twelve thousand dollars to every American family, if he wrote six thousand dollars to every individual, this would get the economy going. You can only buy American. Guess what? The economy would come back. When you don't put money in people's pockets, when you withdraw right. economies, when you literally saddle them with Obamacare, 25% of Americans aren't even going to buy Obamacare insurance. And 99 plus 99 percent apparently, nobody can prove that anybody's actually signed up for this mess. I know. That means... Because- it's, it's just ludicrous. You know, way back four years ago, or three years ago now, when the law was passed, you and I and everyone else and that was conservative and understood this a little bit, saying this Obamacare will never, ever get off the ground. It cannot work. And boy, yeah. what's happening you, you, now is it's not working. Well, you know, my, my wife asked me, why do I get Time Magazine? And I said, because I want to see what the evil minions of hell. Yes. So right. Time Magazine published. And when I read this article, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I realized, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. When I read the lies right through here, how they had some guy in Texas, 27, who didn't realize that he could pay $80 a month to get a mid-level insurance and get subsidies and so on. I mean, people don't realize this is not the affordable health care. This is the unaffordable. In fact, I'm changing Obama's name, and this is not a slur against Asians because I think people of all nations are great. I'm going to call him President On. Unreasonable, 
unresponsive, uh, uh, undignified. I mean, he's president on. This man is off his rocker. He is. There is no way else you can describe it. I've been really trying not to say that, but it's, there's no doubt about it now. And the things that he is saying about the debt ceiling and and the shutdown and all the rest is just there's no, very, It's like any business. If you have a restaurant and you have so much cash coming in and so much cash yep. going out, simply balance your budget and then you can have the right number of employees. People are getting paid their tips and the business keeps on buying supplies and food. And as a restaurateur, people are happy because the food is high quality and you're maintaining good standards of cleanliness, and you continue to keep your business open. You can't say, oh, uh, you know, next week we're going to have a debt ceiling where if we can't raise the debt of the business because we're, we're growing, we're, we're basically going to shut it down, and then we'll try to see if we can fix it then. No, you shut it down. You don't have people coming to buy food exactly. at your restaurant. Exactly. You, don't have, you don't have income coming in, and, and, and then those debts are going to go kaboom. And if your creditors get word that you've shut your restaurant down because, quote, you, can't get, you don't want to get more credit to grow your business, they look at you like you're not a good credit risk, i.e. China, Japan, and elsewhere, right, right. and now they start to pull the plug. Now, this, by the way, hurts them, too, because if there's a revolution in China, and I've said this before, we're more likely to see an internal revolution in China than in any Muslim country. There's 10 new individuals trained with a degree in engineering or an advanced training in technical school, etc., in China for every job. They are teetering on an internal collapse in China. This is not yes, the giant. Are. This is not the giant monster super empire, the replacement for America, as you hear from some idiots that are supposedly gurus of finance. We have a paper tiger in China that is controlled by a small clique of maniac geriatric communists that have airstream jets to have their children go to the University of California for spoiled children, USC, and 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 they have private villas and organic food and everything else and filtered water and everything that every luxury you can imagine and yet the population are literally living on a bowl of rice a day in an incredibly polluted environment where 60 percent of the air and 30 to 40 percent of the water is undrinkable and dangerous for human health and this then is got the reality all these ghost cities they built all these ghost cities to give the appearance that their economy is robust they got thousands of places where people can live and no one's living there because they can't move in they can't afford it. They can't afford it. And what's going and there are on no is, jobs. and there are no jobs. And by the way, in China, they took away their policy, the one-child policy. But what they said is, well, you can have if you're not one of the uh, a parachik of the Communist Party, which is by the way, 82 million communists in a population of 1.4 billion people. That's all. China is not a communist country. It's controlled by communists. Yes. It is a slave country. People right. need to get that. We have a slave country with intelligent people abused by 82 billion million communists that roll over, run, run everything. That's right. That's right. And you got this uh, shadow economy in which there are trillions and trillions of dollars in debt, just like we are, and there's no way they can pay it back. Right. And by the, by the way, there, there are minions of the global banksters that set them up with Mao Zedong, which is British operative. They don't understand that when they're given marching orders to sell, like Carlyle Group, to sell their major manufacturing for heavy equipment, they sell it to the Queen and the Saudi Arabian King. Ba- Thank God for that. Yeah, it's going to be ugly, though. Yes, Billions dead. Not just a physical death, but a spiritual death. That was the worst. Welcome back. You know, uh, we're not just speculating when we say these things. Uh, there's three classes of information I need people out there to understand. And they're going to hear on this program things at a higher level than any other show on any other network or radio or television show on the planet because I speak with a technical expertise in these areas. I bring on top guests that are scientifically valid like yourself, top scientist, Dr. Mike Kaufman, Ph.D. And there's three classes. Number one, there's a what I call... Visions and dreams that God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and I will send you prophets that will tell you the truth that's not open to anybody's opinion, including mine or anybody else's. There's also the biblical truth. That's class number two. And then there's the best information we can gather from the current situation to figure where it's going. And when I read things like Trends Journal by what I call Einsteinian-level geopolitical analysts like, you know, Paul Craig Roberts and Gerald Salenti, who bring about this magazine together in your articles on mm-hmm. the death spiral, we're not in a warm-up. We're deep in it. 
we're, we're literally ready to spiral the toilet bowl of hell and see the economic devastation of our society. We're ready, we almost, without Mr. Putin, I call St. Vladimir, we would have had an attack on Syria in World War III last month. That's how close. We literally heard the whiz of the bullet of the final missiles that come over our cities, and it was only by the angels of the Most High God holding that force back that we didn't have World War III last month. You know, you're, you're absolutely correct, and this is what gives me some hope, because uh, Psalms basically tells us that the nations roar and scream and so forth, and, but they will fail unless God allows them to do it, and so far he's holding them back. Now, I don't know when that's going to change. It seems to be changing right now. I mean, it's just literally changing before our eyes. Now, how how long that's going to take is beyond, I don't know, but it is really, really getting bad. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to set dates, but I'll give signposts. Yeah, uh, I, I believe that in the second term of Obama, which is two years left, plus a couple months, we will see um, a peace treaty. We will see a new surveillance yeah. super, uh, state set up in America. We will see some level of martial law declared after a series of, of uh, CMEs or contrived economic disasters. And we will see a, uh, a, a sequential collapse in the world economy that will bring to heal Russia and China and the Muslim nations to a world global economic order. We'll see a peace treaty in the Middle East that will either be a one-state policy with a province for Palestinians, but we're going to see something that will allow the Jews who filed a month and a half ago to set up a synagogue in the exact place of the Herodian Temple. That's already certified now. We have the the, the picking now of the, the Kohanim. They have all the, uh, the ashes of the red heifer and everything to go. They can even just set up overnight a tabernacle of Moses in the desert, which they can put in the Temple Mount in place before they build a physical, solid if you want to call it a synagogue or temple. Yeah. So that we're, we're there. And when, when you see these things coming together, you know that we've come so close to destruction that the world is willing to capitulate financially, geopolitically, and otherwise, and agree also that the reduction in world population and the killing of the elderly and the unborn is necessary for the survival of planet Earth. That's what makes the mark of the beast so evil. That's yeah. why when people take the mark even in intellectually in their mind, in their hand, in their actions, why it's so devastating, because they buy into the Agenda 21 policy. They buy into the idea that whether it's a chip in your cell phone and your body or just the biometrics of your eye and your hands, that you agree to a system that says, yes, mankind is responsible for the global climate problems. Yes, mankind is destroying the planet. Therefore, let's get rid of mankind and reduce the population to save planet Earth. And this is the primary thesis of these Satanists. Yes, it is. And just for those of you in the listening audience that still have a little confusion about climate change, I have a minor in my Ph.D. on climatology. And I will tell you, bald-faced, right up front, there is no scientific empirical evidence, none, zero, that man is causing global warming. In fact, there is overwhelming evidence that it's got to do with the sun. And the sun is going into a very, very dormant period, probably the last 20 or 30 years, in which it could drop the temperature, Earth's temperature, could drop several degrees, and we could right. get back into a little mini ice age. I don't want to say that because a little mini ice age is ten times worse than warming. It is warming produces actually some good things, but an ice age doesn't. Well, and, and when the last mini ice age occurred, they had four feet of ice on the Thames River in London. Yes, so they used every to haul, winter. Yeah, every, every winter. winter. Every every winter, it was so desperate it forced all the northern peoples from the Scandinavia, Norway, etc. In fact, most of the Vikings that came down to go to the cities of Moscow and Leningrad and other places, they came down during the Maunder area. The people that were in Greenland that had a colony there, they had to abandon yeah, it. Gone. Right. The people that came to North America, that went to Baffin Island and other areas during the warming periods before, they all died. Yeah. Yeah, they did. It's a, it is a very, very dramatic and very scary scenario because right. and, what we're being and, done is trying to we're trying to be sold this bill of good on global warming in order to have cap and trade and all the rest of the control our economy when in fact well, we're going to be doing just the opposite. Well, we know from the Milankovitch cycle from other cycles that we're heading into a cooling period that lasts roughly 60 to 70 years right. according to the Chinese ring studies Dr. Habibullah Adamazatov from the Russian Space Agency, Dr. Easterbrook and dozens of yeah. others that met three years 
ago in June in Chicago, they proved conclusively by early next year we will be heading significantly into a mini ice age. That means global famine, incredible increase in energy needs at the very time that Obama and the idiots are not fixing the problem. They're not hardening the grid against extreme weather, which is also causing famine. We're having an increase in ozone layer damage caused by geoengineering of the upper atmosphere with nanoparticles, thorium, aluminum, and barium, which are paramagnetic, that are basically weaponizing the planet so they can create plasma weapons over any city and create a 100 megaton explosion to visualize through the Earth's through torsion field imaging and to create geotectonic events or earthquakes at will by pumping in energy through the plasma of the upper atmosphere, so the upper troposphere. These maniacs have weaponized the planet Earth. They've made the Earth itself a weapon of mass destruction. And the evil has reached the, the level now, it says, in Revelation 11:18, he says, I shall return to destroy those that destroy the earth. That's God's promise in Revelation, yeah. his actual quote. I right. shall, so if anybody out there says, well, you can't be a Christian and be an environmentalist, well, you haven't read your Bible, and you need to get your act right. straight. If you're not an environmentalist, you're not a Christian. Absolutely. I agree. I'm an actual environmentalist, although I will not ever be accused by the environmental or, um, mobs of that. Because well, they're not interested I, in saving the environment. They're interested in controlling you and me. This is what right. they want, is control. They're not trying to save the environment. And there was nothing ever about global warming that was designed basically to protect the, the Earth against global warming. It was all about control. The same thing with right. biodiversity. The same That's thing a, with all of the a, Agenda 21. Same with Obamacare. Obamacare is only incidentally dealing with health care. It's yeah. written by drug companies and insurance carriers. It wasn't to right. provide better, more efficient health care, more advanced health Healthcare, quantum functional medicine, healing people's bodies and balances, reducing toxin loads, fluoride, genetically modified foods, radiotoxins. We see no action, for example, on Fukushima Daiichi, which, by the way, is chewing up the upper ozone layer because radiotoxins like strontium, uh, radioiodine-131, um, uh, argon, and other radiotoxins that come out of Fukushima are chewing up the ozone layer, so we're now being bombarded by higher energy ultraviolet B, C, and D light. And people don't know that. It's killing, and also these particles get down and kill the intermycorrhizae of lichens. Uh, in the lichens, these organisms that literally allow the, the roots of trees and plants to pull in the nutrients. And so our forests are dying all over the planet from these crazies. I know. You just sit back and you just take a deep breath and say, Lord, come quickly, because, you know, we just can't survive a whole lot longer with these idiots running the world. Well, God, God is listening. God is listening. I can tell you, uh, if I did not have faith, I wouldn't be coming on this program. I'm yeah, smart enough. I, I could be I agree. hide up in a mountain, be quiet, and say, you know what? Mankind is so stupid, and all they want to do is attack me or my guests. You know what? I am what's called spittle-proof. In fact, I like spittle. I've got to the point where I almost like people attacking me because at least they're not apathetic. If they're ticked off, if they're angry, if they're spitting, that's good. Because you're not apathetic. I've made you mad at least. So you might even consider that you are your own worst enemy if you don't face the truth of what's coming and is upon us now like a wild animal. It's so these articles are going to be available. We'll post those up uh, after the show today. Um, Dr. Mike, we need to pray very seriously. In fact, we should probably say a prayer to start this last segment. You know, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of the, uni- of the universe, your Son, which is you incarnate in Yeshua HaMashiach, we need you uh, to intervene now. We need you to bring the last drop of grace to people like George Soros, uh, to Yellen, who now is going to be the new Fed chairman, to all these people that if they don't repent, take them out. Uh, yeah. You know, bring, bring them to a point of grace, but when you're finished, bring judgment. And we need to bring the, the world up to, to have people stop spitting on those who are willing to put our neck and our intellectual and our personal, if you want, reputation on the line and our physical danger. Because we know that what's coming is not just the physical death of many people on the planet caused by the economic and the other chaos, and not even protecting the Earth from major space weather and changes in the sun activity and nearer space objects, but the spiritual death of millions that's right around the, the corner. 
Most yeah. people don't realize this is not the end of the world. For, for many people, it will be. It not only will be the end of their world, it will be the end of their existence related to the Most High God, which means their Absolutely. spirit, their soul, will be destroyed. We're not just talking about the physical death, we're talking about the spiritual death. So we pray now that, they, that those people out there that are resistant to think that they know better, repent. Repent yeah. of your ignorance, repent of your inactivity, repent of your cowardice, repent of listening to regular media, repent of listening to anybody else. The two things, a well exercised intellect that's willing to ask better questions and the quietness of a spirit willing to be empty to let the Most High God fill and confirm to you whether this is true and then take action. I don't care what action it is, but whatever God tells you, that's what's called good. Good is to hear and do God's will, and evil is anything other than that, even if it looks good, smells good, and tastes good. Uh, We're there. Uh, This is going to get very ugly. I expect before 2016, we are going to see the revelation of a global financial order that's going to be very nasty. We are a heart step, a half step away from the mark of the beast. We are moving to a new financial order that they're trying to start a war over. They're now trying to start a bond market runover. They're doing everything to crash the dollar. It's almost like saying we're going to take a jet pack and put it on the dollar because it's not dropping fast enough. The other currencies are dropping quicker than us, and we're going to have a jet pack to drive the dollar down into the open maw of the volcanic destruction of America's creditworthiness on the planet. Yeah, this is crazy. That's what the, all seven of my articles really portray. And I would follow up with, you, with your prayer and just say this. There are literally at least a million or more Americans right now that are praying for this country at, le- at 9 o'clock every night. I'm part right. of that. And I've got, God told me about a month ago, you know, stop praying for this country and start praying for the salvation of these people. Because exactly. most people, their lives are going to come to an end totally, just as you said very soon and we need to be reaching out to them and really trying to start a a massive massive uh effort to convert this country back to christianity well the very last sentence of the last uh, paragraph of the first chapter of of the scroll prophecy which i released in 1998 uh it says to america there's a prophecy to america if you will not soon repent you will become only a whisper in the darkness of yeah. America. Yeah. A whisper in the darkness. Imagine a nation so destroyed that people don't even believe you ever existed as a nation. A whisper yep. in the darkness. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. It really is. And as you said, we've got a jet pack to the bottom right now. It's just uh, every time you turn around, every day something evil is coming out that they want to have and, legislation and, passed and, or whatever. And they, always, and they always act like they're so nonplussed and they can't find a solution. When we sit here and I come up with a 10-point solution to health care, we come up with a yeah. solution to the environmental issues, we come up with a solution to nearer space objects. And it doesn't mean spending ridiculous amounts of money we don't have. It also is the old idea, why do we talk about pre-existing conditions? Why don't we have a health care system, as I mentioned last week, where the doctors are paid a salary, your health records are private, nobody can key into them from a squad car when you fly into Frankfurt Airport. We have a system where we take care of you and we prevent a disease and we find out what functionally and physiologically is wrong. If you want to grow good avocados, you've got to put right minerals in the soil and the right probiotics and the other things right. to grow good avocados. Why don't we do that with people? Do we think that hypertension is a bistolic or metoprolol deficiency? Do we think that dementia is due to uh, an anti-dementing drug that will actually do problems? Or you've got a calcium channel blocker deficiency that will actually make your brain shrink and drop your IQ 30 points in five years? <laughs> What, what kind of craziness is this? You know, and the problem is, as a qualified expert in this, I can tell you, everything is corrupt. In fact, I even tell the churches, I say, we don't have the Laodicean church. What they should have prophesied, I call it the Latte church. These pastors need to get on their knees and repent of not dealing with real issues. Yeah, That's like these black pastors are now finally, finally reaching the point where they're enraged. We talk about this in the first hour with uh, Michael Steger. They're enraged. I talked to uh, to uh, Harley Schlanger because in the in the eastern United States, this idea of uh, we're so proud of having a black president, they're not just embarrassed; they're enraged. This is disgusting behavior. It is, you know, it is literally disgusting behavior. Disgusting. It wouldn't matter what skin color he is, by the way. It doesn't matter. No, we don't care if he's purple matter. with yellow polka dots. What the man is doing is destroying the fabric and the underlying pinnings of America. 
And he also wants to take away even the right to, quote, freedom of religion and make it to the freedom to worship. And if he dare say a thing against Islam, if he could get away his way and have a proxy as the next term in 2016, he'd have it so if you say anything, like they do in Canada, Britain, Australia, if you say anything against Islam, you go to jail. Right. Or if worse. I said these comments in Canada... Where I was, I'm an American, but I lived there for a good part of my first part of my life. With my mother was from North Dakota, my father was from Canada. I would go to jail. Do not pass yep. go. Go yep. to jail. I mean, people don't understand. They think, oh, Doctor Deagle, you're exaggerating. You say, no, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating at all. I'm telling you that Canada, Canada is over the edge. It is a laboratory for what they want to do to Americans. Yep. They've had 30 years head start on us. What, by the way, for those of you who are interested, part six of this series, I talk about uh, Austrian economics, and it is the solution mm-hmm. to the mess that we're in right now. If there was ever a solution besides God, it's got to start with God. But uh, in a physical sense, the Austrian economic model, it does parallel what the Bible prescribes. So what we're seeing okay, well, is... What are the key points there? Like we have the key point left. is that it, it, it's based on the individual. The same as our Constitution. Yeah, it's just the capitalism. On, yeah, well, on, it is. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Free market. Right. You can't give what you don't have. Right. If I have plenty, I can feed my neighbor. You mean, I, I, I keep on seeing Obama think he's, the American public is an ATM machine. Uh, you know, as they say, you know, if you continue robbing Peter to pay Paul, eventually you'll Peter out. Yep. Yep, that's the, exactly right. This is right. craziness. And, and you can't do this. You have to have a system that's efficient that doesn't take in reasonable amounts away from those that are producers to make sure everybody's included and taken care of. Right. And you can and still you have a, a level, decent... Level playing field. We do need regulations, but they're regulations to create the, the level playing field, not to have social engineering. Right. Not only that, you don't want bills so large, there should be one subject, one object. No bill should be longer than 10 pages, written yep. at a grade 8 level. It should never be put into law now with direct democracy, which is possible with the Internet, etc., iPads, iPhones, unless every congressional and senator runs it by the public first to get our feedback before they actually, quote, make it, quote, law. Absolutely. Nothing Absolutely. should go to law unless it goes through us. This idea yep. that congressmen and senators and their junior assistants decide what to do and they don't even read the bills that are 3,000 pages, oh, and their aides tell them when they're fresh out of college, it's like, you want to pull your hair out and say, you got to be kidding. It's like, we're going to launch this rocket. We never built it, but our students built it, and if it blows up on the tarmac, we're all dead. And I'm thinking, uh, I don't want to be on the tarmac when this rocket takes off, but you guys think it's fine to push the go button. Yep, yep. Just uh, as we're winding down here, I want to give my website. It's americaplunder.com. If we go into Islam there as well, we have had those conversations on your program before. Yeah, americaplunder.com. That really take off now. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, in fact, let's uh, list a couple of books. americaplunder.com, that's the book. And what's the name of the book on Islam? The name of the book on Islam is uh, Islam in the House. It's actually Islam mm. at the door, scratched out in the house. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. the, yeah. that, that's a very nice play where you, <laughs> you think they're just at the door and you have to scratch out. No, no, no. They're already inside the back window. <laughs> right. They're at right. the kitchen table. They're using the bathroom. They've got the dinner knife on your throat. And, and, they are, and, <clears> and they're creating the <throat> rules and regulations by which we have to live. That's what the most astonishing thing is. They well, are literally in charge of policy formulation in the White House. Well, we see that with Valerie Jarrett. We see that with well, Obama, yeah. who's basically a, a Saudi shill and a, a, a British banker, European banker shill, with George Soros, if we call Papa Geppetto Soros. <laughs> yeah. You know, someday, Obama, you'll be a real live boy. Yeah. But actually, he is a boy now. He's been treated like a boy in the White House. What can I say? Yeah, he is. But he loves it. <laughs> 